All right, welcome to the Australian Lawn and Garden Podcast. I've been looking forward to this one. We've got Wade and Paul from AEG. Guys, how are you going? Good, mate. Good afternoon. How are we? It's the first time we've had three people on a podcast. And uh, look, I'm glad you're in the same room, no internet issues. And uh, you've got your lovely uh, products behind you. Uh, I was going to introduce a series. Actually, I should get you to introduce yourselves very briefly. So, Wade, what is your role at AEG? And then, Paul, you can jump uh, in so, and let you know your role. Absolutely. Uh, so, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wade. I'm head of product um, and strategy for uh, for the consumer group. Um, so, I look after the uh, AG brand and all the development we do uh, here from basically cradle to grave, uh, which is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm sure we'll get into it a bit further. Yeah, and I'm Paul. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Luke. It's awesome to be a part of this. And, uh, I'm the state sales manager for our on-site division uh, through Victoria, South Australia and WA. So um, being out in the field and, and, and looking forward to uh, explain to you, Cathy, or uh, listeners, what we can uh, what we can do. So we've, exciting. we've got the guy who helps with the product development, sort of in the back end, kind of on the front end sometimes, and the guy that's actually helping out with the front end stuff when you actually need it. And also AEG have sent their best two, two best looking employees in the entire company. <laughs> So if you guys are listening on Spotify... We've done our hair especially for the podcast too. I definitely need a haircut. I actually had a haircut this morning, genuinely speaking. (laughs) Well, if you guys don't know about the series, what it is, we're calling it Makers Month. Um, I was inspired by an event that goes over in America called Equip Expo. I'm doing this intro every single podcast, but the idea is that there is this massive event in America called Equip Expo where every single brand gets to just talk about their strengths, talk about what makes them special. And the thing about being in Australia is you don't usually get that opportunity. And I thought, well, I couldn't organize an event, but we could do a podcast series. And the brands have been fantastic uh, getting involved, uh, sending great people like Wade and Paul here. And so we're just going to talk. If you've been interested in the AEG product range, you've been wondering about what makes it special, why you should get involved with it. Uh, Maybe you've wanted to make the jump but not quite been sure if it's right for your business. Hopefully, this podcast is going to help you with that. And you know what? I'm going to say this right now. They've given us a deal. I'm not going to tell you how to get it till the end. But uh, so, you know, if you just want the deal, just skip to the end. Uh, But at the end of the podcast, I'll put this on the screen right now. Uh, give me one second here. All the listeners know how technically inept I am sometimes. Here we go. You're probably not going to see the code. I'm going to cut it off. But you're going to get $5,000 worth of products for $3,000. Well, a little bit over. I rounded those numbers, people. But there is just under $2,000 worth of savings. And uh, Wade, this is the first time you're hearing about this deal as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely it is. <laughs> Is it making? Right, yes, look, it's a great. Yeah. I was going to say, is it making you nervous? Because if we get a hundred people sign up, you've lost two hundred thousand dollars worth of worth of income, man. Yeah? <laughs> and and you know what? I've got I've got a, a league of new happy people using our tools and getting it out there and and showing it and using it every day with other professionals. So exactly. You know, but for me, it's it's a great investment. We've got uh, so for those who are listening, I've got something on the screen here. I'm not zooming down low enough because there's the code there, and I just want to get you to listen to the end of course you could skip there but we've got a 21 inch self-propelled lawnmower uh kit oh this is all 58 volt stuff uh the line trimmer the blower two extra batteries a brushless chainsaw a pole saw attachment hedge trimming articulate attachment extension pole and an edger attachment in other words everything you would actually need for your own business uh, for for a general gardening contractor that is and a massive, what's well, about 40% off? I mean, this is one of, if somebody was to send me this sale, like just on email, I would think that it was one of those Nigerian prince scams. So <laughs> if you guys are interested, listen to the end. I'll, We're definitely not that. <laughs> no, you're more, you're way too white to be Nigerian princes. But <laughs> so tell me, guys. Again, people listen to the end to get to that deal. Tell me, how did you get involved with AEG and then specifically the type of niche? Because AEG covers about 700,000 things, right? You got drills, you got everything and obviously getting into gardening. But how did you get into, firstly, I guess, AEG as a whole and why are you interested? Wade, you can start and then Paul, take it away from your perspective. 
Absolutely. Um, so, Luke, funnily enough, the, the 58 volt range actually has been around for, for quite a while now. So we started development on the, the range uh, in about 2015. Wow. Uh, so, you know, an opportunity was identified in the professional lawn yep. care space. Um, you know, that obviously with everything that's happening with, with petrol tools, um, obviously emissions, uh, noise, you know, the, the fume side of things for the operator. Uh, you know, as a technology company and, and specifically, you know, from a battery specialist uh, and, and real market leader in that space, logical, right, you know, yep. for us to come up and, and start to take it, um, to, you know, some of those established, you know, petrol brands um, that were in the space. And, you know, we have, we have the know-how, we have the, the engineering. So probably the, the really unique part of, of what we did with this range was, you know, curate it from the ground up. And, and that's what we do. That's something that as a business, um, you know, we, we actually invest um, in not only, you know, the, the, the tools themselves, but it's actually comes down to every single point of detail in the development. So we do all the design. We do all the engineering, yeah. um, and then we do all of the testing and, and, and all of that behind the scenes, as you sort of said earlier. That's what we do um, with every single one of the products that you know you can, you can see on the shelves. So for the 58 volt range, uh, that was specifically in uh, in 2015 is when things kind of kicked off, uh, or even potentially a little earlier, um, late 2014, and eventually in in 2016. When we felt that the range was ready, that's when we launched the 58 volt range into market, and that's sort of what I would consider it the generation one um, product. Um, and certainly, then over the years, we've we've expanded our range, we've added you know additional tools, we've increased performance, we've developed new batteries. Um, you know, the last sort of since 2016, we would be you know on average. Um, you know, from a development standpoint, we would be working on anything from, you know, three to sort of five major changes um, per season, give or take. Yeah. Um, and they might yeah. be really minor things. And I'll call them major because a lot of stuff has to go on behind the scenes. So, you know, even something small um, like, you know, we might get some feedback on, on the trigger um, and people not liking potentially the shape. They might not like the way in which the power delivery is. So is it a linear power delivery? Is it, is it right or wrong for the user? We can actually influence all of that and actually change it. So, you know, over the time that we developed the, the tool, not only is it, you know, from 2014 to 2016 and we just stop and that's it. No, 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 we keep going, right? So we listen to the feedback, we talk to customers, we're constantly evolving and developing those tools to make sure that they continue to be performing exactly the way that the professional needs and paul so you're so you're obviously wait you've got that passion of of you're excited about it developing right and then paul you're kind of the person who's going to be out there with the actual contractor at least more than what wade actually is he just yeah you know, definitely so, so yeah so my uh, my team my team will yeah they're, they're out there in the field they're, they're seeing these customers daily they um, getting this feedback. So this is the critical feedback that the customers are providing to my team. And it's a straight line to, to Wade, but, you know, and, and we can quickly, um, you know, pivot to, to whichever way we need to go and we can get that live feedback. We're not sending it overseas or anything. It's it's coming through the ad office here in Melbourne. So um, my team's critical in that and that customer level of customer service just speaks volumes to what we can, can do here and, and how you know, we are here for the customer. We're here for the contractors and, and we do listen. It's, it's not just going to, you know, go in one ear, one out, that and out the other. We're, we're definitely here for, you know, to improve it and to be the best we can be. And, and generally what will happen, honestly, Luke, is, you know, Paul, Paul has something happen in the field, right? I'm generally the first phone call um, and, you know, we'll work through it. If it's troubleshooting on the spot, if I can do that, um, absolutely, you know, we'll, we'll try that. But then certainly the, the kind of next steps are, Hey mate, I need you to bring that here, um, and I'll have my engineering department look at it straight away, um, and we'll start pulling down the tool, taking a look at it, finding out what's going on, uh, and then yeah, going from there. So you know, from that point of view, to, to, to Paul's point, we we move pretty quick um, when it comes to you know trying to rectify those sort of things. But 
you know, it could be simple as, oh, mate, you didn't put the key in the mullet. There's, there's simple stuff like that. You have to pick that up in field. Um, but, you know, then there's curly ones as well that, you know, in, in that event, I can actually have, we can have a, something happen in field in the morning and, and we could have feedback um, by lunchtime and the tool could be completely torn down potentially. What's the, what's the dumbest thing that anyone's handed a bit of tool in for before? Of course, your customer would never do anything stupid, but in in the event that they might have potentially made perhaps a mistake, uh, what is the silliest thing that you can remember? I mean, I've, I've, there's there's plenty of funny ones over the years, Luke. Um, I've had <laughs> I've had a, a person return a line trimmer, um, and they had pretty clearly run over it, um, oh. but they had. <laughs> They returned it um, and said that the shaft was bent and that that was a, a problem with the tool. Um, so, yeah, yeah, like that's pretty <laughs> honestly silly and you would see probably worse. Yeah, that, well, just recently we had a, a guy with a lawnmower um, call. It's just, it's not working, it's not working. And then when we went out there, you know, we had a big song and dance. So we actually headed out there and actually the uh, the rat had chewed, or the mice had chewed through the core. Oh, wow. Um, and it had... <laughs> So of course it's not going to work if you haven't, you know, the cords aren't even connected. So um, yeah, that sort of stuff we get all the time. But hey, yeah, I'd rather attend that. Than, yeah. yeah, well, at least yeah. it's at least it's honest. The mouse actually cut through it. Yeah. It's difficult when you get like we've had this before because obviously I've, for those who don't know, I run a gardening business, and when people, <clears throat> we've had times where we like we take after photos after every job, and you get clients who will complain about something and they're just being entirely dishonest and trying to blame it on you one of the worst ones we had <clears throat> just having a vent here to be honest but we had a guy <laughs> who had a he was on a on a hill right very exposed hill and he was working fifo and he came back and his gate had been basically blown open and uh, wrecked his fence and we had, had like crazy weather and he was trying to get us to pay for it because we were the only people who would have opened the gate. And so it was just 100% that we hadn't shut the gate. And we had an after photo of the job with the gate that was shut. And it was kind of like, I got the fear, yeah, like he he had no group for grand stand on, but he was really, really hoping that he could somehow manipulate it, that we would pay for the insurance or something. So I guess, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, do you get too much of, I mean, obviously that's pretty extreme, but do you get people, because we'll, we'll talk about this later. Actually, let's talk about it now. Your warranty stuff is pretty, it's almost like it's, it's too easy to abuse. So you kind of, do you know what I mean? Some people are so difficult to deal with warranty-wise. And um, just my thoughts here as I ramble on a little bit, you've got, there's a reputation of things that are sold at Bunnings where you're like, especially gardening gear, right? The drills and stuff. No, the drills and stuff are seen as professional, but the gardening gear is often seen as like uh, kind of almost there and people get worried about it. And I feel like this is what's going to be attached with your brand is people are like, because it's next to something that is literally designed for grandmas, it's kind of like, is this also designed for grandmas? But I think what you're doing, Paul, and that side of it, you got the the. You're telling me just off air. Maybe you can tell the story about how quickly you can replace things and the seriousness that you have to the contract market. It's a bit a little bit more serious than that. But the it's so well supported, at least from what I understand, that maybe you do get a bit of manipulation. So there was two questions there. One is how do you feel about comparing being compared to grandma <laughs> stuff? And the two is is do you get people manipulating the the warranty stuff? Or you sense that a bit. I mean I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to take the grandma one if you want to take yeah, the go ahead, take, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you I, take I mean, if you if you go to any any dealer, you purchase a tool anywhere, they're gonna cater to all markets. So, you know, let's talk Sydney tools, total tools. They don't just sell the professional gear. They absolutely have ranges and brands within those stores mm. that are designed for non-professional users. I would tell you the exact same thing if you go to any mower shop and the exact same thing, still Husqvarna, yep. all of those. You know, I mean, still, for example, have three different battery ranges. Their entry level, if we want to call that, it's, it's DIY. Mm. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not shying away from that. They've got a totally separate platform for different markets. So I would tell you, 
Bunnings is the same. Any, any retailer is the same, right? You know, at the end of the day, you do have availability for catering to all users at any of the places where you would purchase your tools. So, you know, to, to be honest, from that Bunnings Association and all of that, they are no different to any other retailer. But I suppose where, where we can come into our own is, is, is play on that, okay, we're available through Bunnings. However, that allows us to do what we do and we can go directly out to the customer with a Bunnings device and be able to you know, service your needs out in the field. So your downtime is minimal. We can come to you if anything was to you know, go down in the field. We're there. We're a phone call away. You've got an account manager. You've got on-site specialists out on the road every single day all around Australia you know, covering this six-year warranty um, on, on, the, on the tools. Um, you know, the batteries are a straight replacement, so there's no downtime. There's, yeah. It is straight in and out. Yeah. We were talking about, yeah, about you know, we had a, a case in Victoria where a, a bloke brought their um, a faulty um, tool back in, in the morning uh, around about 8.30, 9 o'clock, and he had it back in his hand at 3, a, at 3 p.m. that night, yeah. fully repaired, no issues, and he's, that's the down. There's no downtime with that uh, sort of service. Obviously, that's gold standard. That's best case scenario. It's not going to happen every time. Yep. However, we've yep. got the capabilities of, of being able to do that because we are out in the field. And, um, yeah, we can leverage that relationship with Bunnings by being able to do what we do and put the customers first. And after sales is just such a huge priority yeah. for us as a business, right? There's, you know, it's all, it's all well and good, you know, you sell the tool, but it's how you actually support it. And that's how you win and lose this, you know, so what the on-site team is and what that infield service team is, is, is at the moment industry leading. But, you know, you have the ability to call on Paul's team or on, on our, you know, in, mm -hmm. infield service team and actually have a direct relationship with them to come and help you out on-site wherever you may be. That's, that's unique to this industry. If, if we went even a step further with the um, the ride on lawnmowers, we've actually got our own service agent. So there's no hiring a trailer, getting it up on the trailer, taking it to the service agent, waiting two or three weeks. We've got a service agent that will come to you, you know, next day in most cases. And so the downtime, the cost saving, it is um, it's definitely there, and the benefits are there from utilising our platform and our our ability to service you. Did you say a ride on lawnmower? Have I missed that you have a ride on lawnmower? <laughs> <laughs> He's opened a can of lawnmower. What have we now? 1742 in. Right? <laughs> Opens. We've opened. Uh, I do have, I'll get some photos up in a minute. We're going to go through the products. But the most expensive, I would, we said this off, offline, I've said this before in other podcasts, you know, the most expensive thing. When you're a contractor with a bit of kit, with a bit of kit, kit, gear, if you put them together, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's what you get. Yeah. Uh, any tool is when it breaks, like right? <laughs> when you when you get a tool that breaks, it, you know, I've had um, a, a stupid thing I did recently where I have an old um, steel uh, petrol powered combi. I've had it for three something years, and I was like. 30 centimeters off the ground and i just i don't know 10 20 centimeters and i dropped it uh just like to place it down dropped it and uh there was like a sharp rock on this bitumen that did a tiny tiny little hole and i didn't even notice kept using it kept using it and then i left it sitting there of my trailer and i came back and there was this big puddle underneath the um well where it was on my rack on the whip sipper rack and, oh, man, I was a pain in the butt and just, you know, couldn't plug it because it's fuel. And anyway, luckily I had another really old one and I just took the old fuel tank off and put it on and blah, blah, blah. One of the things that's really interesting, though, is like when you've got petrol, right, a lot of things can go wrong. There's more moving parts. There's more issues like that. And so it's a fascinating world that I think – I wonder if, and I'm just barely processing here, if some of your competitors out there have just gone, we don't really need that on-site stuff because it doesn't really break. Like the, the things will break, but the the problems that you're likely to get with a more simple electronic setup. But having said that, we're all idiots and we do things like drop things and break things. And even if it's not the fault of the tool, we still need some help. So having something that comes out to you 
it's it's an interest it's, it is unique for sure very interesting uh what tell me we briefly touched on this but paul what are the warranties on the tools and this is including in the ones that you could get on a sale that we're going to send you bankrupt with because everyone's going to buy it but <laughs> yeah so six year warranty on our tools uh three years on on all our batteries so crazy yeah and that covers all of the gardening yeah so um industry leading you would say yep yeah 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 it is it's um certainly from a from a professional you know warranty perspective um, absolutely you know, six years on a professional tool um again if you talk to some of the tools we've been talking about luke some of the petrol gear general rule um will be 12 months to, to two yep. years uh, but for commercial use they'll come down as far as three months so you know it depends on the manufacturer and whatnot but uh, yeah from a six-year perspective for our tools that is absolutely from a professional standpoint um yeah it's 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 peace of mind i really at the end of the day yep. you know if you, if you think about it it's also us backing our tools so you know to you and in terms of what you're talking about about you know, your service and do we need it do we not need it you know of course you don't want to yeah. need it and and you know we back our tools from factor with a absolutely incredible warranty but at the same point in time if something does happen you do have the ability to call but on top of that let's say in your instance you know you were you were up up the creek you know you, you didn't have a secondary line trimmer on your uh, on on your trailer and you needed something you could actually call and they, they could come to you and sell you a trimmer where you were. So you could keep going on your hedge trimming, your blowing, whatever it would be, but you could actually transact there as well. So it's, it's a mobile shop as well as obviously looking after you from a, a service and, a, and, and that perspective. I feel like it's like Uber for whippersnippers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what is it? Or Dash, one of those things. <laughs> yeah, Pete. <laughs> yeah, um, so here's an interesting question for you, Wade. And I guess, Paul, you could weigh in this as you yes. needed to. But the idea of commercial, right? What is commercial and what is prosumer or, you know, hobbyist stuff and what is stuff for grandmas? Because people will have – I like the fact that you've backed it up with a warranty, right? Kind of that would be the standard, wouldn't it? I mean, but what do you think? When you're thinking about a commercial bit of gear – is it the performance? Is it? Is it how you back it? Is it who is simply intended to? Because I wonder how many people would take a, and I don't know how much this happens in your neck of the woods, but you can like go on Alibaba and get any sort of thing and just slap whatever you wanted onto it. You know, this drill that I bought at Alibaba, I'm going to paint it a different color and say this is a commercial drill. You know what I mean? And we all get we all seen those videos on YouTube where people test things back to back, and there's something that's residentially targeted, whether it's a gardening tool or whatever it is, and it gets it gets way better results than some cheapo brand that slapped commercial on it. So, what do you think when you say something's commercial, right? What's going through your mind when and how are you targeting those people? So, the, I mean, the pure and simple definition for me from a commercial standpoint would be somebody who uses this tool for their living every single day in, day out, and earns money off it. You know, this is a tools of the trade type of thing, right? So if you want to talk about what is commercial, it is a person who uses these tools for their livelihood, right? Pure, pure plain and simple. So, you know, from a development standpoint, yeah, to, to the Alibaba conversation, yeah, of course, somebody can do that but i think that's probably a major difference for what we do right so we we design we engineer we manufacture ourselves in-house so that is tti um as a business uh we we do that and certainly for, for the ag brand we take a huge amount of time to make sure that the products we are developing are suited to that professional or commercial use so the AG 58 volt program and the tools that we're, you know, showing in, in those deals, um, they have been designed, developed, engineered, and then most importantly, tested in Australia. Uh, so my team, what we are responsible for is the development of those tools from cradle to grave, right? So from concept in your head um, through to final execution in market and then afterwards as well, right? And the gates we go through that, um, product development is something that is, um, it's, it, it can be tough, but it's also incredibly exciting and, and rewarding. 
you know, at the end of the day, and uh, if I lean back and grab the second. <laughs> One of my babies um, that we spent uh, a good two years in development on, on bringing this particular tool to market. So, you know, everything from handle thickness and grip, positioning of the motor, positioning of the battery, the gearing, uh, the motor we chose, the, the communications we have. There's an LED on this tool that communicates. It's got a work light, um, cut capacity, cycle speed, all of these things come into it um, during that product development timeline. So, you know, we started with a, okay, people were using Felcos. Day in, day out, Felcos are obviously the number one manual pair of secateurs. Mm -hmm. um, and what do people like about them? Oh, well, I like their, their serviceable um, for myself. They're also very lightweight. Yeah. Um, you know, they sit in my holster, all of those things. So we'll, at the very, very beginning of something, we'll actually start talking to to the user. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we, we will actually engage and we've got a, a, a fleet, for lack of a better word, but a, a whole a whole range of um, customers, end users, professionals um, who use tools for a living, who we actually get samples out to, um, to test when we're a little bit along the line. But to very begin with, we're actually chatting to them about, you know, what, what are their problems? So, you know, you might start with a, a conversation and, um, I'm fairly fortunate that one of our field testers actually lives um, sort of up and around the corner and he's got he's got his own franchise, uh, well, not franchise actually, but he's got his own business that he's built from the ground up over 20 years. He's got three crews um, and and I've got a, a very close relationship with him and chatted to him about, you know, samples and testing and how he uses tools. And, you know, we go as far as, as, as sending some of my product team out to, to watch him um, as he and his team. It's a bit weird. Teams, right, a bit creepy. <laughs> yeah, very. Uh, it's not a horror movie, is it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, joking. Understanding <laughs> how you use the tool, where you use the tool, when you use the tool, what tool you go for, in what scenario. Um, that's how we really start to understand the customer. And as a result from that, then start to go, okay, well, Problem, right? So, you know, from, from a second tool standpoint, one of the things with these that was really, really critical was the cycle time, how fast it can cut and then reload and cut again, right? So, this thing cycles in under a second and it will cut up to 32 rounds. So, Paul, how you know, thick is your thumb? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and they, they volunteered to test this on camera. All right. <laughs> Honestly, it is, yeah, you, you definitely want to keep your second hand kind of behind your back and nowhere near the action. Um, but, yeah, from, from that perspective, this tool was designed, developed, engineered and tested by the Australian team uh, for Australian conditions. And, and, you know, as a result, it's, it's had uh, worldwide success. Little old Australia um, has, has, you know, this, this product has ended up being sold in... Uh, in, in the US um, as of, so I want to say, March this year, roughly. Um, so, yeah, really, really exciting for us as well. And that's the fulfillment part, I guess, I would talk about when I say, you know, we live and breathe this sort of stuff. I'm a, a pretty passionate guy when it comes to, to product development, and mostly because, you know, that you get a huge amount of satisfaction in, in customers actually coming back to you and saying, hey, this is killer. This is this is just a, such a, a great tool to use. It's 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 changed my life, some people have said, mm. um, you know, and, and, and other people, which, you know, you talk to some and they'll say, yeah, it's great. And, and again, but for them, that's expressing a huge amount of, uh, of, of, of gratitude. And I guess, you know, they, they do really enjoy using the tools. So that's just one example. Of it. You know, a couple of episodes ago, I asked if people would be interested in purchasing a lawn care package that I designed. I'd had a couple of messages from people asking for that. I didn't think there'd be too much interest. There was quite a bit of interest. So I've made a package, but it's not just a spreadsheet version that I talked about in that other podcast. It's actually a spreadsheet uh, and a one hour plus video explanation going through every single little detail of the, the package or the program and we go into exactly what fertilizers I use, exactly how much I apply, why I, I do that, how I think, you know, how you would compensate for weather, what sort of wedding agents, kelp products, all that kind of stuff. When we mow, when we groom, when we aerate, uh, different herbicides we use, 
everything is covered in that. If you're the sort of person who's interested in that, it's seventy three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, you can blame the U.S. exchange rate for that random number, but it's seventy three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, on the Patreon, there's a link in the video description or the podcast description. And if you're the sort of person who loves this kind of podcast, uh, you know that this whole series we're doing for Makers Month. It's the best way to, to support this is to jump on the Patreon and become a monthly member. There's a lot of work uh, involved with these kinds of podcasts. I can't do it on my own, so I'm now getting people to help me with editing and things like that, and that comes straight from the Patreon. So if you're a Patreon, genuinely speaking, this podcast series is brought to you by you. I could not do this much work on my own. So thank you so much. Let's get back into the podcast. All right, we're back. I was very interested in these secateurs, and I've told Wade that uh, to save Paul's thumb, he needs to go get something to cut it on screen. But um, I was really interested because there weren't many options, and there aren't many options for these secateurs that aren't two thousand dollars or so dedicated to the vineyard or uh, you know full time pruning crews. And a lot of the contractors listening to this, even if you don't take advantage of the mowers or anything else we, we talk about. A powered set of secateurs. Now, I haven't used these specifically. I've used the little brother of these, which would be the Ryobi one. For those who aren't aware, that's under the same uh, parent company. And so Wade told me he had something to do with that as well. But you're saying that these just absolutely dominate the Ryobi ones, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, mate, the ones you bought are, uh, it's just certain demographics. We're talking to the, you know, the target customer and that sort of stuff. These, you know, the ones I'm holding here, are they're designed to that commercial user, that professional user. And and I guess, you know, what you were, what you were saying before, they're not a $2,000 unit, right? These, these things are $399. Um, so there's a pretty big price discrepancy. Um, and, and certainly, again, again, I start to talk about Becky, but... You know, a thousand cuts on a two amp hour battery, just to give you an idea, and sort of chatting about roses and that sort of stuff. And, you know, some, something like 150 rose bushes, if you were trimming all of those up, um, you'd be doing that on one charge uh, on a two amp. I've got eight amp hour battery yeah. on this, which hasn't been launched. So good for you, but um, yeah, the, the eight amp battery that's on this is probably 10,000 cuts. Honestly, yeah, you would never use this battery, uh, but you could. If you want. Well, they I bought the Ryobi for one single job, right? I did not expect it to last. Yeah. And I literally, I bought two and I gave one of them to uh, my wife's grandparents. They love it for their annual. And that's who, I mean, the DIY who does their 10 roses once a year, fantastic. And especially if you're getting a little bit older. Hey, my mum um, loves them. Yeah. Absolutely loves them, right? It's, it's horses for courses. It's the right tool for exactly. the right job for the right person. And, and I, the way I did it, and, and um, I should get myself a pair of these because the I, I had a gardening glove on my left hand and then I put a welding glove on top of my gardening glove and then I had the battery secateurs. So I was like guarded up on this and I was like cut, throw, cut, throw. And I wasn't caring about where the thorns were and it was so quick and efficient. And, uh, you know, it's just... Oh, it saves your hands, and you know I do. I did also have some Felcos because the Ryobi's have a very slow retract time. That's why I wanted you to get this. Can you cut one of these? You brought an entire tree from yeah. outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Can you cut one on the so screen the and, and show us what it looks like? Yeah. So I've got two of them, right? So this one is just a, literally just a, a, a branch of gum. It is hardwood technically, but it is dead. Um, at a guess, I want to say it's about twenty mil in size um, but the cycle time on these is, is the real draw cut to this right so if the thorns are cut in under a second and the reload time obviously is, is crazy right so if i'm doing a cut probably i'm going to try and keep it in shot as a bit higher can. about where your head is if you can there we go <laughs> <laughs> um so for example you can see the mess between my you really don't um, want your thumb stuck yeah, in that. You really do not want your thumb stuck in that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's hardwood. I actually grabbed something green. Um, the cutting capacity is a little higher on the green. Um, so, you know, from this perspective, I want to say this is probably closer to 30 mil. Yeah. Um, and I just quickly locked this off out the front. So, yeah, it's very hard. I'm sorry I'm doing my best here. That's where I'll probably 
playing stock with my that is so um, fast yeah to give you to give you an idea you're uh yeah you're about at least three times faster than that other unit you had been using um and certainly from when i spoke to you before about that what a professional requires yeah uh, we knew straight away out of the gate that you need something that will you know reload um quickly to be able to perform your cuts because time is money so yeah yeah i'll leave it there and you can see the little led on the uh on the back there and the beat there was just it timing out. So after 30 seconds of not touching it, for safety reasons, we have the unit turn off. And if I press the trigger, it won't actually turn it off. You'll like press and hold the trigger. So it's deliberate. When you turn it on, it beeps at me and then it's on yep. again. So safety, inbuilt safety, which is important as well. Now, another thing that you've got, which is <clears throat> very unique for any kind of gardening brand is you have a, a single handed reciprocating saw. And I might just try and put that on the screen as I'm talking to you. So people would know what a reciprocating saw is. Where do I find these little things uh, on your website? Uh, it should be, if you go to the garden section, it should be in uh, cutting. There's a cutting. Outdoor equipment. You, you, the, you, know, you guys have too many things for sale. That's the problem. <laughs> um, but as I'm, as I'm looking for this, you guys have a... Oh, chainsaws and pruning saws. That's probably what it's under. Um, yep. So, now chainsaws, fantastic little things, right? And they've obviously got a lot of benefits. But if I put this one on the screen, the thing that I love about the reciprocating saw, there's two, there's two things. The first is a reciprocating saw is the blades, you can take them on and off. And blades are not really that expensive. <clears throat> what that means is if you're trying to cut out a root, you can just sacrifice a blade. If you're digging out a tree, and I've done this, um, and you know it's very successful, just have a couple of $6 blades in your ute, and you can just cut out roots, sacrifice the blades, and you haven't ruined your expensive chain for the nice cuts you really need. The other thing about this is you can get these little one-handed chainsaws, of course, right? but for me... I don't I don't use a chainsaw all the time. And I for those little cuts, yeah. I'm assuming that this will be somewhat slower than a chainsaw. <clears throat> but when you're using a tiny little cut, it's probably a second per cut. And just having something in the car that you know you've got backup sharp blades, one hand on the branch, one hand on the tool, not the two handed reciprocating saws that you kinda use for like uh just general carpentry work or you know, demolition stuff, or just get you getting, you know, into tight areas. These ones here, I can see this as a really good option for several people out here. Maybe not everybody, but maybe some people's like, yeah, I've got the big chainsaw. I want to use it for my nice big cuts, but something smaller, you pair these two together, you could get 90% of all your pruning done just with those two. For light pruning, general gardening work, we're not talking about tree loppers people like that so i really like that is that kind of what you had in mind when you were making this kind of stuff 100 percent. i mean you know it needed to be needed to be lightweight for starters and, and ideally you know single-handed use although i think legally we can say it's single-handed use but it's um you know the the idea is that you know you can use it and it's very lightweight and maneuverable and, and portable and obviously you know your application you were mentioning is hold on and i've done the same thing right you know you you can use a chainsaw and absolutely destroy your chain you, you're likely to gum up your bar pretty badly if you hit any sort of dirt you can drag all of that back through um under the the, the the chain guard and the cover and all of that and still spend hours cleaning it right so having something like this which doesn't do any damage to the tool and it's a you know, six dollar blade eight dollar blade whatever it is it's honestly a no-brainer it's the difference between that and digging um, I know what I'd choose, <laughs> especially like when we're talking about our six-year warranty. This tool's going to last for six years, so we're talking fifty bucks a year. Yeah, like yeah. that can't be you know, loaded up onto a job to do exactly what you're talking about. Luke. It, you know, it pays for itself after one one use. So, hundred percent, it is the tool. I find as well it's interesting that uh, there's, I mean, some contractors, and this was me when I was young. You would buy the cheap set of second, set of second tiers, right? Because you know, but then you lose them. And you kind of like, they get blunt very quickly and all that kind of stuff. 
And I kind of feel that when you get a tool that you feel very proud of, whether that's a set of $100 Felcos or whatever, you kind of treat them better and they just kind of last you anyway. So it's kind of just having a $300 pruning saw, which you probably wouldn't normally spend $300 on a handheld saw, although they do exist. Um, but just having it there, you kind of, it will last, <laughs> you know, just from the attitude. Buying a $30 set every six, $30 hand tool that you leave out in the rain gets rusty or whatever, thinking you're saving money, but you get one every six months anyway. It's kind of the same price. Do you know what I mean? Hold, hold yourself to account more than anything else, right? You know, I'm, I'm not going to leave that, you know, out because it's I've, I've invested in it, right? And it's, it's also something that you probably wouldn't want to leave out because it's just so handy. Oh, 100%. You know, I don't want to be without that tool, right? Even, um, you know, we, we can talk about even landscapers and, you know, obviously you've got on your podcast as well here, Luke, that I use these for around, you know, um, the plumbing or, you know, stormwater yeah. drains, cutting out pipes, things like that. So it's not just a, a, a one tool. It's it's a multi, multi-purpose multi tool. It's not just, just a garden tool. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can, at the end of the day, it still is a recip saw and you can put different blades on them. You can cut metal, you can cut PVC, you know, and obviously, you know, for pruning, there's, there's you know, bigger teeth and, and that sort of stuff. So from a versatility perspective, it's mm. on board. Yes, yeah, super yeah, versatile. Pretty damn handy <laughs> Yeah, I love mine. I don't have one of these. I have, a, again, a Ryobi one. I was gifted that as a present from my father-in-law. So thanks. Uh... Not, not yet, Luke. Yeah, not yeah, yet. Yeah. Not not yet. yet. <laughs> well, I mean, don't tempt me too much. Uh... <laughs> Ken? Just send through your power. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you do it for me. Uh, talking about the uh, – let's get into the chainsaws because I was already on that page. And if I, ch- if I challenge myself too much technically – We'll have half this podcast with just me trying to work out how to use a website and talk at the same time. You have a lot of different <laughs> chainsaws. This is one of the things that might confuse people because you do have, like you said, you're targeting different markets. So you've got, if I can, can I zoom out? No, I can't zoom out. How many chainsaws do you have and which one should we look at if we're, let's say we're the commercial operator, we're not a tree lopper, right? So we're not cutting down massive trees all the time. But every kind of month, two months, three months, we might need to remove some kind of sort of as thick as my bicep arms kind of thing um, or, you know, maybe a, yeah, cut down a small tree every now and then. Which one should I be looking at on, on this list? So, of course, there's a, there's a few models on there, um, Luke, and I guess probably the, the first thing to look at here is there's, there's only three chainsaws on this page in terms of models. The difference is the battery inclusion. Sure, okay. Um, so these two we've got. Right now, one's got an 8 amp and one's got a 4 amp. Right. So it's just a size of the battery difference um, and therefore runtime, essentially. Um, so how many cuts you know, am I so going to get the- out of a... Sorry for cutting you off. How many cuts am I going to get out of a 4 and out of an 8? That's the million-dollar question, right? And every every time we talk to runtime, it's, it's so condition-dependent, right? So I can talk about my experience in gum and then Paul goes home and, and cuts pine and it's totally yep. different. Then you use it on something completely different again. So runtime is really, really difficult um, to quantify. But, you know, we do have some general sort of estimates um, that we would use and we've we just got to quantify those with our, with our claims, right? So, you know, for a 4 amp, for example, we would say 50 cuts on, you know, 25 centimetre gum as an example, right? And that's not necessarily exactly for that saw. But that, that's the example. And then from an 8 amp perspective, we might say 100 cuts right. on 25 centimetre gum. So, you know, give or take 8 amp versus 4 amp, there is, to a degree, double. It's it's twice the tank capacity. If you think about the amp hours as like the fuel tank in your car, 4 amp hours is, you know, 4 and 8 amp hours is 8. 8 is double. So you can... That's the really sick. You could easily, you could easily remove a, a couple of small trees. You know, a couple of sort of three, four meter tall trees. Uh, trunks are kind of and the rest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and the rest and the rest. I mean, I I take the fifty eight volt saw when I go camping. Yep. Um, and you know, when we're when we're you know, felling trees or you know collecting firewood, whatever it is, um, it's put up my saws now at twenty. What is it? A twenty eighteen model. Um, so I've been running it for yeah five years um, when, I go, when I go camping and yeah it's put up with a fair bit and you know I think that's probably part of what we do as as, as product development we use and abuse the tools um, to to make sure that they will last and, and perform 
um, for, for the rigors of, of what will be required day to day. But more specifically to your question in terms of what would be suited to, you know, what you were describing in terms of those applications, those sort of smaller forearm cuts and that. That's the screen on the left. Uh, sorry, the unit on the left of the screen. This is here. the 18. That unit there is 18 volt. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a 12 inch bar. Um, so 12 inches for everybody who plays centimeters, it's 30 centimeters. Um, and, um, and, and yeah, I mean, that is perfect for if you think about, you know, your forearm being 15, yep. maybe, um, unless you gym a lot, you might unless be Paul, that, but, um, the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, <no matter. laughs> He's, he's, been, he's been working out before this. He has, I can tell. I can tell. He's got the big pump from the gym. He was just there. I got a haircut before this and Paul's at the gym looking. Yeah. Can I, I'll ask you, Paul, about the uh, – because what I was thinking in my head, right, is a lot of people starting out, they don't have a lot of money, but they want to be professional, right? And a lot of the cost yeah. with the batteries – sorry, of battery equipment is the batteries. And if you're doing a, not a whole lot of pruning, but you want to have a full kit, you can run the reciprocating saw, the, the uh, pruners, and this smaller one on the same battery, right? So, Paul, if you can be honest for a second, do you have problems with people using this from – because no, I have no doubt it could cut a piece of wood, right? But what I would be worried about is, see, there's a plastic fitting there. This one's – the 58's got the metal on the front, right? There's a few little things I can notice. This bouncing around in the back of a trailer or, or back of a toolbox or something like that, do you have you experienced any problems with this tool in that case when people call them out to you? Is that asking too much? No, no, no. no. It's a good question, but um, no, we don't get that feedback at all. It's it's mainly got to do with you know the, the use of it, you know, in different areas. But you know, to your point, if someone wanted to, you know in a bit of coin that you know can't upgrade or where that's where the beauty of us will come out to that particular customer and we can talk through the solutions and see what is best suited and we can lend tools to people we can you know show them exactly how it will work in different scenarios so they can actually choose the best course of action for what they, their requirements are so it's not you know I, I look at it and go if you want to buy yeah you know, even a 500 hundred dollar car you'd probably even test drive it you know so we want you to get these tools in your hands to make sure that you know, it's fit for your purpose. So um, to your earlier point, was, we'll, we'll custom you know, fit you, I suppose, to, to what your needs are. You know, and in terms of the quality of that tool, yeah, we, we're not seeing anyone, have, no, no tools are coming back with that sort of issue with, with breakages there. Obviously, there are issues with tools and it comes with the, the game and so, yeah, we're, we're not going to sit here and our tools are perfect. But it's, um, that particular issue is, is not existing. And Luke, I'd be failing if it was, right? So part of what my job is, is to make sure that this thing is not bulletproof, but, you know, it, it is going to stand up to exactly what you're talking about, bouncing around in the back of it, bouncing around in the back of a truck, a toolbox. That's part of my job to make sure that we spec the product, not only from a performance standpoint, from the specifications and inclusions and, and features, yeah. but also, you know, yeah. we, we do drop testing. I know that sounds crazy but we actually as part of our product qualification yeah. process drop these at all different angles from different heights um to make sure that they can actually withstand the rough and tumble uh, required you know all your testing you're talking about here's a testing that i bet you didn't do but crossed my mind because i'm stupid yeah, yeah they say no stupid questions here's one uh has anybody ever put a bike chain on this and, and then bolted it to a bike <laughs> Because if I'm sure they have, I'm just not aware of it. <laughs> because if I was 15 years old again and my dad owned one of these, right, he better watch out because <laughs> I reckon I'll try it. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, there'd, look, there'd be a few things. There'd be a few things. I mean, gearing would be interesting. These things are direct drive. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that'd, that'd be a bit interesting. I mean, but uh, no, not that I'm not that I want to know about it, of course no it's just a stupid thought that goes in my head but again as <laughs> we can talk off air Luke. Don't as, worry, as an adult with, who has his own children now then I certainly wouldn't recommend it but come on <laughs> if you're 13 14 and you got to get to you know your friend's house on the weekend in a hurry that's a great idea um 
Sounds, sounds like the sort of creative person I would mind uh, having a tattoo. <laughs> I'm the type, I'm the type well, of person that sends something to warranty. Paul comes out and realizes it's user abuse. That's what's going on there. Yeah. There's a bike chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not cutting trees. Why is this? <laughs> I want to talk about the, the blowers as well now. So let's let's get into this. I think uh, – this little, you've, this little blower here, okay, it's probably not useful for, for what people are using in the gardening scene. This is the little, you know, the, for those listening, you've got the little handheld stuff. It's more for cleaning out a workshop or, you know, blowing off your desk or inflating a, you know, a pool, um, you know, unicorn or whatever floater you've got. Um, Wade is picking up something a lot bigger. <laughs> you've got two here that I was looking at before that are a little bit different if I'm not con- – confusing myself you've got the 18 volt yeah are you holding an 18 or the 58 in your hand i'm holding an 18 and, and i guess this is to try and simplify things again there's old models or models that um that we no longer sell that potentially might still be on the page because there's still some stock in the network and the reason i say that is because this launch this week oh um, oh okay we got brand new so stuff this is brand, brand brand oh, brand get off the website then new. Um, yeah, it is, but it was it was on the website. It was that second one along. It was next to the little baby you were talking about. Uh, um, this is okay, yep. the brand new. Sorry, I'm oh, no, no, it's stuck in me in the head. <laughs> um, this is the brand new 18 volts. Uh, what we're calling Stealth Series blower. Okay. So uh, this launched this week, um, and Paul's team have been chasing me for months. Months and months. Um, months. On, on this thing, this is a real game changer. And policy of the industry. Um, so, just really quickly, and again, I, I always go to specs, it's just kind of what I do. Um, but this will be at the well, right now, it is the most powerful 18 volt blower on the market. But when I say 18 volt, single 18 volt battery. There are some systems that are running dual. Um, in my mind, that's beating a bit. I can't, of course, compete with something that has double the voltage. Um, but, you know, certainly from a pure performance standpoint, um, this is the most powerful single 18 volt. And what you get with a single 18 volt is obviously lighter because you've got one battery versus two. Um, but it's also the quiet technology. So you'll see this nice big logo on the side here called Stealth. That's in reference to the uh, the sound reduction that we have actually built into this unit. And again, I don't have a torch. I can't show you this, but this is the intake, right? So this is what's called a, a jet blower or an axial blower. Right. So the fans kind of very What's your face there? Oh. down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He's, he's doing, mate. Although, for those who are listening, uh, Wade is being very excited about the blower and he's swinging it around <laughs> like it's weather. But I would say if I'm going to get hit on one of the tool to, to, tools we've shown, I'd rather get, much rather get the blower to the face than the pruning. Yeah, than the yeah. second yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the head trimmer. But let me, let me just describe this to, uh, to people who are listening. So it's a straight through blower so it, it, there's no like in a petrol one we i've talked about this in other podcasts but you, a classic petrol style the intake is from the side this is straight behind so you're not going to suck your shorts in or your skirt if you're um scottish you're a little or you know or if you just you know wanted to get out in the skirt i don't know why you would go to work in a skirt but anyways <clears throat> but yeah so straight through it's still you're saying it's quite 18 volt what are the two questions people are going to ask you're saying it's really powerful how does this stack up to your yep. common petrol-powered blowers that most people would use? Not naming brands, but we kind of know what, we, what we're talking about in the back of our heads. Yep. Yeah, I mean, look, then that's, that's exactly where this is aimed at, right? So, you know, you're, the design you're talking about is called centrifugal. Um, it, it pulls the in, air in from the side, turns it 90 degrees and shoots it out. Um, so your petrol units, um, general rule, it's, it's really interesting, right? Because you can measure blowers three different ways, airspeed, CFM, and Newton. Okay, yeah. So it, it, it's, it's a little confusing, but the, the ultimate holy grail, ideally, if you're looking at specs, would be Newtons. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of the, the all-encompassing spec um, that you should be looking for and ideally use that to compare blowers. Um, so this thing is 16 Newtons. Um, 560 CFM, uh, and off the top of my head, I think about 240 kilometers an hour. You're pushing my uh, off the top of my head specs. There you go, 230 kilometers. You an lied hour. to us. Um, so, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten k's off. I got a lot of uh, a lot of specs in my head. Um, 
But uh, but yeah, so this unit literally this week um, it launched and Paul's team have been stomping at the bit because the biggest piece here is apart from the performance, obviously, is is the noise. Mm -hmm. um, so on the intake here, it's actually lined with foam. And what that foam does is actually reduce the amount of noise coming from the intake. But as a result, I'll plug it in, I should say, we're in a very small closed office. Yeah, um, very intimate. So I don't know how this would go. Um, we should have tried this before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then we'd be professional. In an open air environment, comparing to, I mean, try and run a petrol side together. Well, you know, the facts. Uh, I would just say you were running it there, but people will be like, I couldn't hear that. And that's actually the software on the, the recording software I'm using because it's – I could hear something. But I guess you're going to have to call Paul out and Paul's going to have to show you. 100%. But yes. Well, we, we've had so much but I want for this and um, yeah, obviously we had a few demo models going to schools and things. And, and in Victoria here we've got um, – We've got exams time at the moment yep. and we had the gardeners going around next to the classrooms utilising this particular blow while exams were going on and not, you know, the teachers inside didn't even hear it going. So that sort of shows you the, the uh, level of quietness that this can perform. And, you know, so, you know, caravan parks have got it on, you know, on t I had it on test. They're loving mm. it. So, we're yeah, we're, we've sold, you know, multiples already just from test modes and, and, and that the quietness as well as the power, um, as you can see, is, is off the chart. So you're getting the best of both worlds and, and um, also you know, the how it actually handles. So if anyone is interested, please get in contact with us because you know, we're more than happy to run one out to you and, and show them the benefits. Paul, when you're out in the field, what problems do people usually have with a blower? Is it... Cause I've got some ideas about what people would think, but I wonder if they're matching up. Do you, do people really complain that much about it, or or is it kind of is there kind of common issues? Yeah, you're or? you're 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 always getting compared. It's like anything, you know. And you know, when you're set in your ways, you know, it's the um, it's the Canadian club at, you know, my dad drinks beer, so I drink beer, sort of thing. So you've always got a leniency to what you're using currently. Yeah. So for us, we're we're out there and. You know, we want to try and get this into people's hands. But it is that, you know, noise factor is generally a, is a complaint on, on anything that we're, we're sort of doing, as well as the power. Um, you know, how much can I, you know, blow and, and how long can I keep that going for? So runtime, quality, uh, as well as, you know, actual um, noise complaints. So that's the three that we constantly hear in terms of blowers. And I think we cover it off. Yeah, fairly well in, in our model. That's, that's why we that's why we get that feedback, right, Luke? So you know we we've known um, that we, we were sort of our, our previous model to this um, it was back when we launched it five years ago. Now that was the most powerful um, eighteen volt blower, um, single eighteen volt blower. Yeah. Um, and and the the criticism of that was the noise. Um, it sort of did have a more high yep. pitched yeah, sound. Yeah, whiny blower um, noise. Yeah, that, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yep. And that was something that me, you know, from a development standpoint, the absolute first thing we needed to address was the noise, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, the performance is right up there, uh, but we needed to address the noise. And, and that's what this, honestly, yeah, we're stoked um, with this unit, but this is not something that, you know, you click your fingers and it happens. This is something that takes, you know, 18 months um, in development was this product. And that's honestly pretty quick. Because yeah. we want it right. The thing, you know, we, we've taken the feedback and you know, we, we put different models out, we test, we bring them back, we test again. So, yeah, yeah. I've had I've had these in field, um, in field testing since about April this year. So that gives you an idea. I've sort of had about six months worth of feedback in field. Um, and there's a number of little things we ironed out and changed and tweaked and, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, before launching this thing, so yeah, it's um, it's it's a, a long process, but it's making sure that the product is absolutely fit for use, and 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 ultimately, yeah, we want people to have a great experience with the tool, right? So, in this case, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one. This is one that we um, we we really will hang our hat on from um, at least this year. <laughs> yeah, and then next year. <laughs> well, actually, it took you 18 months, I but. Actually It'd be around for a while. I've got, I've got, no, I've got 
be hiding right here that will be actually an exclusive for you um, that nobody knows about yet. Um, that isn't going to come until early next year. But um, yeah, I've got something for well, you. Can hire one. You can have whatever you like. But um, epic. Yeah. Do you know what I want to talk about? Uh, now, if you can't talk about that anymore, I want to talk about your brush cutters. Um, going down the list here. Now, I spoke to a certain social me- social media influencer, a certain person uh, who will remain unnamed because <clears throat> uh, I, I was talking to them on the phone yesterday and they were talking to me about they would been using a bit of your kit <clears throat> and actually I didn't want the brush cutter, line trimmer. I clicked the wrong bloody thing. Uh, anyways, while I'm stumbling around your website, I was talking to a... Um, a you know, lawn and garden social media influencer. And uh, one of the things that they said, here we go, line trimmers, is that the stats on your, your line trimmer, fantastic. A lot of the stuff, price point, fantastic, all these kind of things. But, and I think you know where this but is going, trigger is difficult. And it's one of those one percenters that can make things make or break it for some people, right? And we've got to push back a little bit when <clears throat> the opportunity arises to be fair and equal. What have, how have you taken that? Is that the only person who's talked about that? Um, what are you doing with, with those kinds of bits of feedback that you get? Yeah, so that hit my radar, I want to say, well, I spoke directly with him. Um, that's, I guess, the first thing and, and found out what was going yep. on. We immediately had the unit returned um, and actually had a new unit sent out mm-hmm. to him. Um, since then, I've also obviously been engaging with engineering. Um, and just to give you an idea of how quickly they're working, um, we already have a new version of some of the software um, that we actually have on that tool. So you imagine these things have computer chip yep. inside them, for lack of a better word. Um, we can actually write new code um and have that flashed onto the unit now that's not something i can do to existing units in the field um but certainly that's something that i can address straight away for future production. right so yeah we actioned that pretty quick i tested a new version of that firmware today um and i'm pretty happy with it but now that's got to go back through qualification um and yeah it's got to be fixed but you know to give you an idea to, to be moving that quickly um Tells you how important it is to me um, and, and certainly how quickly we are actually in this business. So, yeah, from that perspective, um, the few things we addressed was what exactly what he was showing um, in terms of the on and off trigger, as well as then the, the linear power delivery of the trigger itself. So all of that has been addressed in what I tested earlier today, um, and that will now go for full, you know, testing um, and then production. So just to give you an idea, that's about a two-week turnaround. That's crazy. Um, for us Hopefully people don't work out who we're talking about. <laughs> I think the... <laughs> but the uh... – I was. I had a good phone call yesterday, and I was like, "He's he's got some good he's got some good stuff going on in the background." Now, Paul, when you're out in the field, because here's the thing about a, about yeah. a line trimmer, right? There's uh, actually sorry, I should have said this before. Before we move on, blowers. We didn't ask the number one question about blowers. What? Are you, who's this podcast host? What is the runtime on this blower? <laughs> Full trigger? Because <laughs> no one else uses Full no trigger. one else uses anything but trigger. trigger. What what bat- what battery are you using? Right, oh, we go back to the conversation true. on that. Yeah. But eight amp hour would be pretty so that's pretty the, common. Yeah, so we're we're going to supply it with an eight amp hour yeah. battery um, as a kit. So you know when you buy this thing, if you want to look to, to your point earlier, right? You know for for power intensive tools a la, you know, really blowers, mowers, those sort of products, yep. you do want the higher power batteries, obviously, right? You need you need the power, you need the runtime. So, you know, this thing uh, on full, full noise on an 8 amp battery uh, is about 10 to 15 minutes. Yep. Uh, now, again, that depends. And, and look, you can put hot day versus yep. a, a cooler day. There's a lot of variables that will play. But that's, I should say, I mean, you don't necessarily go full trigger. No. 15 minutes straight you're going to be on and off you're going to be walking you're going to throttle down or you know in this case you're going to release the trigger a bit and you know be more sensitive areas around 
windows or garden paths. You don't necessarily need all the power all the time. Um, and this isn't our big, large area blower either, right? You know, we've got a backpack blower. Um, if customers want to take on a, a much larger mm -hmm. area, uh, we've also got what I've got hiding under the desk here that's um, that's also designed for larger areas. So again, the applications for this is what Paul, uh, what Paul was sort of talking about earlier is around those schools, the retirement homes, the, you know, those types of places. Um, that's what this is perfect for, but you don't need to be there at 6 a.m. to use it. And I think that's a, a major difference, right? So thanks for answering that. Let's move back onto the line trimmers. Because <clears throat> I'm interested, I'm interested yep. Paul, what feedback do you get from these? Because I kind of look at these and the whole the whole problem with battery line trimmers is when it's thick, the runtime just goes, drops right down, right? Mm -hmm. How now you do have the option of charging and, uh, you know, having spare batteries and going through things like that. When you're out in the field, where do you find, Paul, that these are in their element? The, I mean, obviously you've got different options, but the, uh, where is it? Is this, no, the 58 volt, this guy here, this 58 volt yep. line trimmer, where do you find that in its perfect element? What is the role that that is where it's at its best? And what kind of jobs are people going to find that they're, they're maybe bought the wrong tool for, for that job or they're pushing it beyond where it was really intended? Yeah, I, I think the, the, the important thing with this line trimmer is just so weighted well. So you can, it is a tool that you can use for longer periods of time. So, you know, in those jobs where you are coming to a, you know, say a house lot that's yeah, been overgrown or things like that, you just take that extra little kick, that extra little power and to be on, on the trigger a fair while, it, it, it holds its own. It, it's basically going to be able to do the job, but it's also precision enough to be able to do a fine cut as well. So if you're coming to a more of a property that is more manicured and you're staying on top of, it's still going to get that nice clean, clean mm -hmm. edge as well. So it's, it's really going to be doing the best of both worlds. Like I said earlier, it's, it's well weighted with the battery on the top there um, to be able to hold and hold still. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the feedback that we we are getting is that it is suited to all environments there. Um, and as we touched on the run times there, um, obviously that's dependent on the actual um, grass that you are trimming um, you know, and the conditions that we're in. But in terms of, you know, this is built for that commercial use. This gardener that is going into, you know, multiple houses. Clearing, clearing or, a block. Clearing yeah. a block or, you know, in the um, you know in a in a school or in a caravan park, so um, it can definitely do multiple uses, and, and that's bigger batteries as well, right, Luke? Yeah. So part of what you know a huge focus mm. for us was to get larger batteries in the fifty-eight volt range. So you know earlier this year we launched the eight amp hour battery, um, so it was double the capacity of the previous uh, battery, but the same before size. So I'm holding here. A four amp and an eight amp, and you can see they're exactly the same size. One has literally double the amount of energy in it. So, you know, from that perspective, that was a huge development focus for us for that runtime. So, again, you know, you went from something that potentially might have got you twenty minutes flat out on really tall slashing yeah. to now getting you know half hour plus forty minutes potentially in those same conditions. So, you know, from that perspective. My role is to make sure that we're constantly pushing the boundaries when it comes to delivering that balance of power and runtime and, and obviously the quality of the tools. I think what I've found with, with the battery gear that I've used, and I haven't used anywhere near as much as what some other people have out in the market, but I've found that the we, we talked about, I don't know if I said it's on air or off air, but the listeners know that I've got a health condition. And... Um, when it was really bad, so my condition's called ankylosing spondylitis, for those who don't know. I had real problems with my hands and uh, I was using petrol stuff on very rare occasions whenever I would do my own lawn or something like that. And I, there was, when I was really unwell, I couldn't get through a lawn without having some sort of light pain in my hand, like it was starting to build and I definitely couldn't do it day. I've got a battery gear and there's no vibration. There's no, like the feel is completely different. And so in those light circumstances, you can um, 
yeah, it kind of, it's kind of, and, and this is across all brands because it's just how the the battery mechanism works or the or the uh, electronic motor works. Just less vibration, much nicer to use. You know, it it kind of feels almost lighter, even though it's not. It's less fatiguing in that sense. And using it yeah. on, I've found that a, a, a bit of kit that might have, I'll make up these numbers, but let's say it's got 20 minutes of runtime on full berries. If you're doing light maintenance stuff, you can actually last pretty close to an yeah. entire day, you know, just because you're never using full berries. With a blower, I found that, uh, you know, a 25 minute runtime is actually on full berries is enough to last me pretty close to a day, eight, 10 lawns kind of in that bracket. And so, the cost of, because uh, people have got to work this in, the cost of the batteries and stuff and their initial purchase. We have talked, I'll, I will just, um, I'll say this briefly because I want to talk about the other gear, but people do need to consider the cost of the battery as equivalent to the cost of paying for fuel. And so, you know, you're not, you're probably actually going to end up in the long run having a cheaper uh, option. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, we've done we've done the sums, Luke, and, and and in all honesty, you've got to view the batteries as an upfront outlay of three years worth. Yeah, of fuel, exactly. You know, but it's not going to be three years worth of fuel. And you know, you chat to some like, most professionals, and some many don't actually keep tabs. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I topped up here, and I, I, so I kind of did a bit here, and I kind of did a bit there, and it's really kind of hard to quantify just how much. But you know, you could get a full kit of batteries everything that you would need for under two thousand dollars right i know that sounds like a huge amount but that's 10 batteries right on the 58 yeah crazy so that if you backtrack it minimum you're getting is three years right that's the warranty on these on these products right so that's three years of fuel up front now the two thousand dollars or eighteen hundred bucks you know depending which way you work it we've worked that out to be about one year's worth of fuel by the time you add in everything else that kind of goes in, right? Because you've got to buy two yep. strokes. You're running yep. two strokes. You've got to buy two strokes. You know, if, if you've got to service your petrol tool as well, that absolutely comes into it. If you don't service yourself, it hurts you even more. Um, so it's just you've got to sort of change your perception a little bit when you do purchase batteries because you've got to see them as your fuel, but your fuel for three years minimum, right? I've got batteries at home. I'm still running that are over 10 years old. Crazy. It just, yeah, just depends. Well, right? the thing as well is that if you go get this sale <laughs> that you've given me, um, so I'm going to give you the code, people, right now. I'll tell you at the end as well. The code is 58V space AL and sign GP, Australian Lawn and Garden Podcast. You need to go to aegtools.com.au forward slash on site. I'll say the code again for those listening. Do you know what? If you post um i'll post this somewhere as well so people can go copy and paste this because you're working right now if you're listening to this and you're thinking i can't stop and write this down i've got your back covered um or you can send me a message on instagram and we'll hook you up with it but uh, that's all on the screen there for those watching on youtube i'll post this again at the end of the podcast but you can save two thousand dollars and you mentioned just there wade and this first thing came to mind you'll say all the batteries you would need would be about two thousand dollars right so you can get them for free technically speaking by spending an extra two grand on this entire kit here pretty interesting well it's just how that works out in that numbers um but yes the batteries are are the fuel now, one more thing I do want to talk about. I'll click onto this. One thing that I found frustrating with a different brand, a brand that probably should know better, is that if we zoom onto these combi kits, and I am a massive fan of any, whatever they call them. What do you call them? Uh, you just call it attachment. It's a, it's a boom. It's called a boom clamp. A boom clamp. But, you know, for people listening, you've got kind of, some people call them the power head or whatever it is, and then you've got all the attachments that go on. To me, no brainer. I don't own a single whipper snipper that is just a whipper snipper, right? Like it is all uh, combination stuff, you know. And what I found frustrating is this little bit in here. <clears throat> there are sometimes in other brands plastic fittings that break way too easily, and you kind of twist them the wrong way. You look at them funny. You growl at them. Um, you know, you say some one unkind word, and that's broken and it's not the end of the world but it kind of is frustrating especially when using a hedge trimmer or something and it sort of twists around 
How do you get much problems with these poor out in the field? Is there a knack to how you treat them? What's the what's the down low on, on these fittings here? No, treated well. Yeah, it, it, it works. So yeah, we've um, we've attached to multiple you know, pole extensions to them, and, and you know guys are just getting through them. So uh, as long as they're inserted right, yeah, and then they're clamped down, we're getting no issues whatsoever. Uh, I mean, like we have a phase of the line of things. Um, you know, so I, I back that design. Um, I'm not saying it's perfect and I'm not saying that I won't improve it in the future because that's what I constantly want to do. And it's certainly what is equipped to the units right now. It's a metal clamp, obviously. Um, but yeah, we, it is robust and has stood up now for the last sort of five plus years of in market use with that particular boom clamp design. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Let's go into the hedge trimmers. We've got one right here, one of these attachments here. Here's one of the things that I think is underrated, and I like that you've you've got one, um, and that is replacement blades. If I can go to your hedge trimmers here. First question, do your replacement blades fit both the extension pole and a – so here's the blades here. Do they fit – are the same blades across everything? Okay. No. No, so it is a different blade set um, between those two units. Uh, but look, spare parts and, and supporting customers is, is critical, right? You know, availability. Um, so that's, again, that's another piece of feedback. That, that fits the unit on the right. On this the one? Right, still yep. there. Um, so the handheld, yeah, the handheld unit there. So again, market feedback, right? You know, listening to your customers. It was, hey, I want to replace the blades. Um, how, how do I do so, right? And you could absolutely do that. You could order it um, through the, the, the special orders team at Bunnings. Um, but more importantly as well, you know, customers knowing that it's actually available is sometimes a bit challenging, right? So we made it a, a very clear decision for us to make sure that that was available on our website. Customers knew it existed, could order it. It was simple. They had a model number and they could place an order through Paul's team or, or any money store. Um, you could call up, quote that not model number, wait for it to come in and you can pick yeah. it up. <clears throat> what, what I went, uh, you guys don't know this, but when we booked in this podcast, I went to Bunnings just to look at the hedge trimmer blades, right? Now, my Bunnings is like 800 meters from my house, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But the reason is yeah. that uh, if I zoom in on the actual blades themselves, um, they were double-sided blades, and that's important. So a lot of the time with um, cheaper, I should say, I was just use it, cheaper brands or cheaper models within a, a, a brand, they will have a single cutting edge and they'll have a flat, hard other edge. And it is not as effective. It's not as long-lasting and so these are double-sided. The next question is, how high quality are these still? Because it sort of seems that it's a little bit too good to be true, if I'm honest, the price point that you've got these at to just for replacement blades. So how long are these lasting? How, you know, how much abuse can these handle if I was to accidentally cut a piece of wire or something like that? I mean, at the end of the day, the, the whole point is you can't charge the earth for a spare part. Again, you're talking about looking after customers. Um, you know, we don't want to charge the earth. We're not there to make a huge amount of money on that spare part side of the business, right? Because at the end of the day, you've got to look after your customers. You get that repeat business. They stay on the platform. They stay really happy with tools and, and the yeah. brand, right? So, you know, from a spare parts perspective, it's nothing that the price point is absolutely no reflection on the quality at all. It's about giving the customer the best experience. And part of that is, sure, I mean, we could charge $150 for a blade set, but is that, are you going to be happy doing that? Or are you going to go, no, they're overcharging. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try, even try another brand, right? We don't want even that to cross your mind. It's got to be, I can get this, it's available, and it's reasonable, right? I think that's, that's really critical. But absolutely, price point does not reflect the quality at all. They are... They are high quality. I mean, everything that we do, right? We were talking about the, the blade set on the secateurs a little bit earlier. And, you know, it's it's SK5 steel, um, which is is very superior quality. Um, and, and it's something that, again, we, when we spec our tools, steel and blade sets and, and that sort of stuff, quality has to be key to that because it's got to stand up. 
Well, what I would say, because they're, they're, for those who are listening, it's seventy dollars or sixty nine ninety eight. I have noticed that Bunnings likes putting things at ninety eight dollars, ninety eight cents. I don't know—is that something that they've told you to do, or is that the accounting? <laughs> it's it's under seventy bucks. Luke. It is, but why? <laughs> why not ninety nine? I've I've noticed this with several different yeah. tool ranges at Bunnings. I don't know if they. It's probably out, it's probably the accounting department that does this, but somebody somebody at Bunnings is like it must be ninety eight. And you've not, I've noticed also that online <laughs> courses are always ninety seven, one hundred ninety seven dollars, two hundred ninety seven. I don't know why, but basically, people, the, the the bottom line is they're seventy dollars, right? And this is a thing. It's what three hundred and twenty for the actual thing. And you are right that when something goes wrong, it is even more frustrating to find out that the part costs a lot of money. What I would be doing, mm-hmm. people, if I was going to buy one of these, I would just get a replacement set of blades immediately. And the reason is that. Things go wrong. Like uh, you talked about somebody driving. I've had someone drive over my own head. One of my own employees drove over the head trimmer that they put down next to the car. <laughs> like things go wrong. And to have a set of brand new sharp blades, say you're cutting something that's really difficult to cut, you get a bit frustrated in the blades. You don't have the time to stop and sharpen and switch them over if you've got the tool and then sharpen the other ones in, in your in your spare time. It's just, it kind of seems like, that's why I said it's too good to be true. 70 bucks just to have a, Essentially, what would make it a brand new cut immediately? Kind of, um, yeah, kind of a great deal there, a great option there. Now, the head trimmer blades, I'm so I was getting confused here a little bit. You've got a 58 volt. Now, these blades will only replace the 18 volt. Is that right? So, is that Correct, just that yeah. they they happen to be on your website, but I can also buy 58 volt replacement blades? Absolutely. So just just based on demand, okay. we, you know. So a lot of people have have come and, and said, "Hey, I want blades for the eighteen volt. I want blades for the eighteen volt." So you can absolutely get spare parts for everything, um, but specifically for that eighteen volt, we also designed it. Um, you know that that eighteen volt head trim is about a twenty nineteen yep. product, and we designed that to be a quick change. So there's just four bolts on the bottom of that magnesium gear casing. Take it off. Swap them yep. over, close it up, put a bit of grease in, and away you go. Um, so we designed that again from feedback, from constant learning and evolution of the products over the years. You love this stuff, don't you, Wade? <laughs> you guys... He loves it. <laughs> You're in the right job. <laughs> I, yeah. You're in the right job. <laughs> I, I, uh, it's one of those things, right? I mean, there's I've, so I've been with the company for coming up 10 years, um, and I've been in product development the, the whole time. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I love it. Right. And it's, it's really fulfilling for me. Like, you know, you start something and there can be concepts and ideas in your head that end up in thousands of people's homes across the world, yeah. you know, tens of thousands of people's homes across the world. And it's just kind of, and you get, you see the reviews and you see people how it, it improved or changed their lives or whatever. It's, it's great. I, yeah, I enjoy my job and I all enjoy this job. Yeah, look, <laughs> for someone that's new to this business, you know, I've, I've been in the you know, trade game for nearly 20 years and, you know, come to this business about a year ago and to see guys like Wade so passionate it just makes our job a lot easier and, and you know, it makes us want to be able to come out to see customers because we can stand behind our product and knowing that we've got the backing of people like Wade that will take the, um, you know, the good, bad and the ugly feedback from our customers and, and improve and want to be the best. That's the thing. We're not going to, we're not just going to stop. We're, we're going to keep improving and, and look for the future and, and that's exciting to me, and that's why I want to be. I wanted to be a part of this, and um, yeah, it's been so fun to be a part of as well. And, and, and as you can see, just by you know the way Wade talks, he's, he is passionate, and, and he um, and he wants to make everybody's life a lot easier with the products that they use. And, and you know, and I think we're doing that. I've done people a disservice because I think one of the things that they're going to want to talk about a lot is the lawnmower, and I'm running out of time. <laughs> And we've got, we do have time to talk about this, but um, it's 58 volts right now. We're not going to talk about the two 18 inch volt version, which is 36 volt. This is the main one that you're going for, right? This one right here. Let's click on this boy. I Ask about the runtime. <laughs> <laughs> you can do my job for me. This is pretty cut and paste, isn't it? It's not that hard. <laughs> You see a pity back chop, some nice lights, a camera, and you can pretend like you know what you're doing. Uh, 
<laughs> we'll talk about the runtime in a minute. You've got this lawnmower. And now, I've seen some videos of this actually tackling some pretty thick stuff, and I was impressed. There was a certain yeah. guy online who was putting these up. I was like, that's actually, that's actually pretty good. Here's the thing, right? The battery stuff, is it a mower? I was talking to somebody. Again, I'm going to keep these people, you know, uh, private because, you know, I don't want you to be getting upset at anybody. I was talking to somebody and they were like, I still don't feel like the battery market can deliver everything from, uh, you know, overgrown stuff down to manicured stuff. And even, and we'll talk about this later. So answer the first, the first question is, is the variety of, of work you can handle. Uh, you know, I'll get the second question later, but the variety of work in Canada, let's stay on this for a second, because it's not just, is the motor powerful enough to cut some, some thicker grass? It's, um, well, let me give you an example. One of my employees crashed my truck last week. Uh, well, the truck that they drive and a 150 kilogram cylinder mower, mow master went into the side of the mower and we didn't realize it actually squished the sides of the metal. Now, we haven't crashed the truck ever before, right? And, you know, this is a, a bad example because it's not a real world everyday thing. But the sides of the mower squished in. And when he started the mower and put the blades on, they were hitting the side of the of the deck. But they're the kind of things that accidentally happen. Things fall off trailers, you know. Um, I've had somebody put a mower on a, a slight hill, didn't realize, turned around, the mower starts rolling, 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 off it is down the hill. Luckily, it didn't hit a car, but it crosses the road and it'll bang into things. How robust is this? Are you confident? Obviously, you've got a warranty on it, but is there any, I guess this is for Paul to start with, is there anybody coming back with this and the wheel's falling off or, or a certain handle snapped? Is that something that's, that's happening out in the field? Not so much, and and to your point, you know, with the lawn mowers with um, the battery, I always use the example of you know three four years ago, you used to see a Tesla on the road and think, oh, there's a Tesla. Now you see a Tesla on the road and like, oh, there's a way mm-hmm. a Tesla. Batteries have evolved so much, you know, whether it's the car market or the outdoor market, and this is no exception. So, yeah, you know, being you know no pull cord, so you know someone that's got two bad shoulders, love it. So I've actually got one of these at my mm-hmm. place. No issue whatsoever cutting the grass that I've got, um, although I'm keeping it low, you know, and it does the job perfectly. In terms of bashing it around, two mil steel deck. Um, on it. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Wait, your job's in trouble, mate. He's going to come after you. Down and a half, but I've dropped the spec. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's built for those conditions. It's built, as, as we said before, it's built to be thrown into the back of a trailer. We all know how we handle these things. They are built to go from job to job. Um, to have the handle at the front, you know, it, I'm sure you put it there for a purpose to be able to pick it up when the when the um, uh, handles go down. You, there's two points of contact to be able to pick these things up. So they're built with all this in mind to be thrown into a back of a trailer, to be thrown in the back of the unit, um, you know, not to be strapped down to roll around. Look, if you're going to, you know, crash, you know, a few tons worth of equipment into the side of it, probably won't last. Yeah, how many? Will last. <laughs> yeah, are going to last. But um, in terms of what we can do and what we can, you know, we can put into it, yeah, it, it holds up the test of time. And you know, you know, right to you know that um, face plate going over the batteries to prevent you know grass or or debris flying into the terminal. So. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a great product. I'm just going to pause that there for a second. Uh, Joseph, 127. So the question that I've got is a lot of these, a lot of these brands, they're taking stuff straight from America and Americans like to cut high and we like to cut low. How low does this thing cut? Do you know off the top of your head, Wade? I do, but I was going to throw it to Paul since he no, knows no, everything. I'll, I'll drop my <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's 18, 18 mil. Luke. 18 mil. Okay, awesome, because it's a 25 here. So Yeah, no, it's not 25. I can tell you that much. That's wrong. Fantastic. I think 18 is about right. I would say 
if I could have any wish, I would have 15, 16. Now, most people cannot maintain most lawns at that height, um, but I have found that that's a nice sort of – it's it's not a full scalping mower because sort of a full scalping mower, you want to hit dirt. But for a lot of lawns, if they're wanting to do uh, the, the poor man's renovation where they scalp it down, first cut of the year – you know, down that 15 mil, but 18 mil is plenty good for for a battery mower. A lot of the American stuff out there is just not getting close to that, and it's quite frustrating for people who may watch your review online. They may see it, think it looks sexy, buy it, and then all of a sudden, 30 mils as low as it goes. Do you? Let me just ask this, Wade. How much? Because obviously, you're you're part of a big family company. That's well, not literally a family business, but like a company that's got a family of 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 different brands underneath it. How much influence comes from the American market? Because that's obviously what are they fifteen times the population? So the money's obviously a lot there. Is this a company? It doesn't sound like it is, but it sounds. Is this a company that is just taking stuff from America and adapting it to Australia? Or, uh, uh, yeah, you're shaking your head. So tell me about the process here. No, mate. No, not at all. So, you know, funnily enough, um, so these mowers are only sold in Australia and New Zealand. They're not actually sold in the States. Full stop. So they were designed, developed by us here. Hence, 18 millimeters. Um, you know, we're talking about the deck and you were, you were sort of asking some questions around that. That is something that we actually test. We qualify. We make sure we're happy with the performance of the market. Um, you know, dual, dual full bearing, we are uh, field bearing wheels. Um, you know, the front bumper bar was deliberately put there for bumps and scrapes. It's got a handle behind the, the power head that you can see there as well. Yep. The lifting that Paul was talking about. Um, essentially view it as a petrol chassis yep. or a mower chassis, yeah. right? That you would find on a petrol yep. or a cordless tool, uh, with a different power head. That is the only difference, right? So when we started this project, and again, this was done by us here in Australia, and its bigger brother, the 21-inch um, self-propelled, they're both Australian and New Zealand only models, right? Yeah. Designed for our market. I thought I clicked um, on the 21-inch. Yeah, yeah. So that's the 18-inch. Uh, the 21-inch 21, 21 bigger brother launched about two years roughly. Is this it? Um, ago. No, that's the whole That's thing. it there, yeah. So um, that one is, uh, so again, there's two different battery configurations there. So that's the 4 amp version. Yep. Um, there's also the 8 amp version as well. So just from a like, time perspective, a um, bit of a difference between those two. And we're actually, in terms of listing the customers and, and that sort of stuff, um, the 4 amp hour kits, you know, were, were, were good. The dual 8 amp hour kits is what the market wanted. So as yep. a result, for 200 bucks more, you get double the runtime, which if you looked at the cost difference between those batteries, um, you're saving yourself a decent amount of money by getting the twin eights for 100 bucks more. Uh, but from a runtime perspective, why did we do it? Because the customers need it, right? You know, you want to get up to two hours runtime potentially with two eight amps in this thing. So just to give you an idea, again, that's on manicured lawns, on your maintenance cuts. If you're going to go hard at this thing, of course, you will, you'll see less than that. Um, but you know that going in. I think that's the, the ultimate thing. And you'd have the same thing with, with a, any petrol tool. If you're giving it a hard time, you're going to use more fuel. It's the exact yep. same scenario with battery. That's the whole point. You've got backups in the truck. It's not. We're not selling you a system and giving you two mowers. We'll be very. Uh, sorry, two batteries. We're not. We're very upfront and honest that two batteries will not be enough for a full day. Yep. Right. It's got to be. You need six, eight. Depends on the amp hours, but you will need multiple batteries to get you by for a day, and that's the reality of it. And every. Every single manufacturer is in the same boat. That's how it is. When I look at this as well, like the price. So for this kit here, now obviously there's a better price. Well, all, all up, if you're going to get everything, right, the deal that you've got yeah. is is crazy cheap that we're, we're giving away. $1,600 for a mower, 21 inch self-propelled mower with batteries is the same price as you would roughly pay for your classic Honda HRU2, HRU216, which is the dominant mower in Australian contracting scene. So price point wise, I've actually found most of these battery mowers are a jump up in price alone without the batteries. What are you guys doing 
to what sort of financial fraud and trickery are you using to get your prices? <laughs> That's a joke, people. Just, just to add, <laughs> I'm not serious. Just to add to that is, um, you know, we actually offer the power pass discount through Bunnings as well. If you have got a power pass, it actually comes down even further. As you can see there, um, that you actually get extra bonuses as well. So not only do you get an extra 4-amp yep. battery when you do purchase it, but then you can choose from the uh, backpack blower, a line trimmer, an extra battery or the chainsaw. So, yeah, it, it is great value for money. Why though, Luke? <laughs> yeah. Because we want to recruit people, <laughs> right? We want to recruit people on the platform, right? You know, we want we want to convert people from petrol tools, right? So we want to recruit people onto the platform. So, yep. you know, it's not, it's not so much of a, oh, you're the same price as the Honda. That's deliberate. Right, we want people to stop and go. Well, hang on a minute. Maybe I should consider this. Maybe I should give this a crack. Right, because all of those tools are priced similarly to what a, a yeah. petrol equivalent would be. Because we want people to stop and pause. You know, it's all well and good to go and charge two and a half thousand dollars for a mower, but you're not going to get any sort of volume out of doing that right and then you don't get the market feedback and you can't invest in your brand in your products in in all of that stuff so it's a bit of a chicken and egg type of scenario where we have consciously said hey you know what we want to get people on our platform we want them yeah. to have great experiences with our tools and then you know in the future expand their portfolio so that battery then powers five other tools you then propagate your system yeah. that's how this works but you know get people in the door, right? Foot in the door. There's There's been plenty of people who have been hesitant, you know, to convert and barriers to entry. This is what we're trying to reduce and remove as much as we possibly can. You're like the, um, the drug dealer giving a free little baggie. <laughs> That's probably very inappropriate and all your bosses are very un <laughs> upset at me for mentioning that. <laughs> It's just, uh, but is it? it, it you know, okay, let's give a more serious one. You're like the, you're like the free little taster you get in Coles, on occasion. A couple of free little crackers, and then you get hooked because it's a great product. That's what you're trying to do: get people in the door, give them a taster, and go. No, actually, this is this is a great product, and I can also buy the rest of my stuff through them. Yes. Now, Paul, I've got a, I've got a question for you. If you can answer this off the top of your head, I'm going to be very impressed. What are the costs of replacement wheels? Do you know that off the top of your head? <laughs> I don't know well, that. Well, I'll be honest. Well, I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> look, I stuck with all this, though. And, and look, look, well, I can actually answer it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Are, you Are you ready for this? It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Look, for, for the gardeners that will be using this product, we want to support them as best we can. So if it was somebody that was gearing up with our gear and, and you know, they're giving us the feedback and, and you know, using it in the right our way, I'll, yeah, our on-site team would be able to replace those wheels. Crazy. Because the reason why I say yeah. this... So that's what we want. This is the customer feedback that... Sorry, the customer service we want to be able to put out there from an on-site side of things. We're not here to make millions of dollars on wheels, you know? I mean, you know, so we... But what we want is we want the good experience. Yep. So... What will it cost you for you know that that mower to go down and you not be able to use or utilize it for days on end? That's that's a huge cost to your business. So why should you also be outlaying costs of, of you know replacement wheels? So we see it as an investment for the future. If we can provide you with that level of service, then you say on that platform exactly what way. Yeah, but if you hit it with a uh, a 150 kilo <laughs> cylinder mower, it's probably stretching the friendship. No, yeah, okay, I understand. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you with the with the. It was a slow speed crash, but the for those who are interested, we had a aerator, a hundred and ten kilogram aerator, with which was strapped down with one of those blue grunt like ratchet straps, right? And the ratchet tra strap snapped, and they're rated oh, for wow. like three hundred and something, yeah. right? Yeah. And the mower was strapped from the top of the handle. And so the bottom of the mole sort of twisted and whacked into it. So um, anyways, there you go. That's a just different story about how straps are. I was not impressed that my $8,000 aerator was not. Anyways, maybe the strap had a fault. I don't know. But uh, so uh, the reason why I was asking about that is because you do find, um, look, let's just, we mentioned the Honda HRU216. 
the wheels are very expensive. And look, they don't they don't break. Wheels don't usually break unless there is an abuse and it's wear and tear over time. So when you look at the cost of it over whatever, let's say it lasts two years or a year and a half or whatever, whatever it is, people aren't going bankrupt. But it was like 120 bucks for a set of wheels or something. And you do feel when you're using those sorts of products, I think the bag on the back of the mower, uh, like don't quote me on these prices, people, but you get the idea. It was like $90, $80, $70 or something like that for a bag. And now if that's what it costs, that's what it costs. I don't mind paying the price for for the bag. You know what I mean? And I I don't think anybody does. But you can sometimes get felt with a bit of a bad taste in your mouth that the product is trying to make money off you when you don't have any other options you know i mean you have to buy their replacement wheels you have to buy the replacement bag and these parts wear and that's fine same with blades and things like that although let's not go too far down that rabbit hole but it is nice to know that like the replacement parts are you know well i think paul you said every single replacement part is free for eternity right (laughs) that's what i heard (laughs) Yeah, it is a difference, I suppose, dealing with the on-site team is that you are dealing with the same people day in, day out. You know, you can can talk to you know, the other merchants. It, it really does depend on what time of the day you go in, you build relationships up with particular yep. people. When you're dealing with our, our on-site people, we've got particular people that work within those areas and they're the people that you will be dealing with day in, day out. So from, from a, a customer service point of view, it's a single point of call. And we've got your full history. We understand, you know, what you bought, when you bought it, and, and we can help you out that way. So it's a relationship, it's a relationship before relationship builders before we are salespeople, and we want to make sure that everything is fit for purpose. I don't want you know service calls. Um, yes, you know, I, true. I want happy calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so we want to make sure that that, that what we're giving you um, will work, and and if anything was to arrive. Uh, yeah, we're we're there to help and we're there to support. Um, Luke, to be honest, he'd let me know if uh, yeah. something wasn't up to it anyway. So yeah, yeah. That's day in day out. That's my job as much as it is Paul's, right? So um, yeah, it's, it's all got to be fit for purpose. And and um, at the end of the day, if if something did go wrong, you've got that relationship side of things built uh, to to rely on. Well, I'm not charging you guys anything to come on here. Everybody knows that. This is a free – because the reason why I wanted to do this is um, we – I don't – I felt that the, the certain times when you have brands on, you you can't trust a podcast that's being paid for advertising because you're like, are they just saying that because they're making money, you know? And because I don't use these tools, I have no authority to say they're good or not. But what's really interesting – to hear from you is that there seems to be this balance between you're selling at Bunnings, which is allowing you economies of scale and probably a more competitive price point. And you've also got this on-site side, which is kind of like this balance between the best of the big business and the best of the small business focus. Because I personally, um, if I didn't know about your on-site stuff, just being honest with you, I would be worried about something going wrong and then just going to Bunnings and having some, with all due respect to Bunnings, having some 18-year-old in a uniform who knows where everything is in the aisle, having no idea how to fix a product, no idea how to support me and I'm there losing money, not having a piece of equipment and they are clueless about how that's going to affect it. And I think that um, the listeners here, if I have a good gauge on them, will be very impressed or at least very curious because that's one of the things that they're worried about too. Going to a big shop, yeah, you get a better price, but do I do I sacrifice my service? And I think there's a bunch of people out there who are sick of a certain lawnmower shop here or there. I don't have any in mind, by the way, people. But I have heard stories of certain contractors who are not enjoying their small business uh, lawnmower shop and who don't like the big business bunnings, you know, all that kind of stuff, who would be interested in this kind of on-site middle ground. What kind of relationships do you build then, Paul, with those people? You've been there a year, you're getting out there. Is it this kind of case that you kind of get to know them individually? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the purpose. It is relationship first. It's, 
finding out about them, you know, outside of work, you know, football teams, you know, kids, families, the works. It, it, I think it, once you have that common ground and you can speak freely, you get the true, um, you know, perspective on what's actually happening. And, and that's what we want. So, you know, we've got dedicated account managers that will call upon people, you know, out of the blue and just make sure everything's still going right and, you know, making sure that we can't help in any particular way or, you know, there might be sales going on or, or whatever it is. And we want to be, make sure that we're the first point of call for those. So, yeah, definitely that relationship in my team is definitely what we, we, we strive to achieve every day. Well, a few more questions before we wrap this up. We're at an hour and 43. I remember Wade in the emails. Was it you who said, do we need two hours for yeah. this? I was, I was shocked. I was genuinely shocked. We, we could keep going to two hours, but I do I do not have two hours. Ron has fine though. I have, I have another podcast literally immediately after this, uh, which people are going to love. But uh, so I want a question for – so the first question for you, Wade, the second question for you, Paul, and you just answer one after each other. But, Wade, what is the number one tool that you are most proud of developing? Um, and, Paul, what is the tool that has surprised you the most with its lack of issues, resilience, like the tool that you never have to get called out to fix? I mean, I can I can crowbar in because we haven't got to talk about the the upcoming. Little, okay, uh, so I, you're happy to talk about this. I thought you were going to talk about it off air, but okay, show me show no, me I this know, thing. I, 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 I was confused. This, I was like, is, you're telling me something I should. I don't know if I can talk about it or not. Mate, this, this is something that is not common knowledge um, at all. It's, it hasn't been announced um, apart from obviously the, the sales team. Um, nobody knows about this, but we are uh, have been working on um, and what I'm. The uh, next generation AEG 58 volt health um, So when this launches, um, it will be the most powerful handheld blower in Australia. Wow. So, in terms of um, my what I'm most proud of, um, it would be this unit, which is launching Q1 next year. So, January. Uh, so a bit of a, a sneak peek. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be Feb. Um, but you know, we, uh, we are running into, um, as quickly as yep. we possibly can, but, uh, this is still what we would call a, um, a, an engineering build. Um, so it's still obviously the tooling, it's all tooled up. Um, but what we are still tweaking on this is, uh, is a few bits and pieces in the electronics. You can see the trigger's not the right color yet. So we're, we're changing some stuff on the trigger, but there's you know, a cable tie on the um, trigger by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> we're here because we've been testing runtime. Oh, right. Um, yeah. So it, actually, it, it has got cruise control on it. Um, but, you know, it's this will be a real game changer for both us and the industry. Um, so our current 58 volt unit um, is about 550 CFM. This is 800. CFM. Um, so it's CFM in terms of newtons, it's about 26 newtons. Um, 800 so CFM. Is, you keep you, talking. I'm going to do some Googling because I think I was doing some stats uh, in the back of my head. Uh, not in the back of my head. Um, in my head before we came on. Can can you keep telling me about this? Yep. And I'm going to find some yeah, stats. Absolutely. 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 So uh, this is 58 volt program. Obviously, the biggest thing is it's part of that stealth family. So it's got this uh, phone intake. Um, that reduces yep. the noise. So not only has it got this just insane performance, um, but it also is really, really quiet. And yeah, Paul, Paul and the guys have been uh, really, really excited about this. They've had a few teasers um, yeah. uh, in terms of when they've come through the office and sort of seen this thing evolve. But this is something that I am most proud of. Um, and yeah, in terms of just specs and features, it's it's got a, an LED interface on the front here. So you've got the ability to lock in cruise control anywhere within the trigger, but you've also got three speed modes as well. So to talk about the different applications, um, you know, you might be in delicate areas on paths around windows and that sort of sparse stuff. You can actually put it in speed one and that locks high speed to 350 CFM. So you've still got variability in the trigger, but it's zero to 350. So you're not going to pull it and it just go crazy and blow something. So you've got, Levels of control yes, infinitely awesome. within each speed mode. Um, so yeah, and the quick quick extension tube. So that's something again. But the taller users, smaller users for different applications. You can quickly adjust the length 
Kube obviously for storage as well. Um, but the big focus here is, is the noise. Um, and obviously the, the, the power is, um, is pretty crazy. So there's, there's a few um, within the industry that are pretty close. Um, but as of launch, hopefully, um, we, we do intend this to be the most powerful handheld um, on the and so the two questions you're going to get asked a lot. Actually, before I, the the stats, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I was looking up and comparing. Yeah, Paul, you've um you've moved off screen there because you knew that waving around a I blower, off... Wade with a blower, Maybe, your yeah, face is in danger. Maniac, I've done it twice now. <laughs> <laughs> he gets he gets excited. <laughs> no, that's good. Now you said 800 cfm, right? Yeah. And that's cubic feet per minute. And as Australians, that means jack squat. If you don't have the other brands in front of you i'll tell you people a br800 steel backpack blower that many people understand is 912 cfm so this is as a handheld unit very close to a a very powerful backpack unit and it looks to be honest not that much bigger than the little one you showed us before that was sort of lightened it's not agile that's, that's a big part of it Luke. so again really kind of i guess from a perspective example they're, they're, they're like our brothers. The design, they both look like kind of they weapons are. that you would see of in Guardians of the Galaxy or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if that's what you try and do because I know that people try and make them, you know, they don't need to look sexy, but it helps with the sales. I understand that. But uh, no, they look good. They look the part. And um, yeah, that's a lot of power in a handheld unit. You're probably going to need Paul's biceps Huge. to be able to use it. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. It's gonna lie. <laughs> You're making me blush. I think I was more of a podcast. <laughs> people know it's like oh, this is a silly podcast. Yeah, the only thing oh, is yeah, that I we're... People... Oh, yeah, just to see what he looks. Just like. be your number one view on YouTube. <laughs> You're doing well if it is. I mean, if you, this is the number one viewed Thanks. podcast on YouTube, you've made a few sales. We actually run you bankrupt by how much you've sold <laughs> from that two thousand dollars savings people can get. I, the one thing, silly thing That's I it. haven't mentioned so far is is comparing price, not in dollars, but to how many Zinger boxes it costs to buy one of these. So how many Zinger boxes is it to get one of these brand new ones that you haven't announced yet? Let's say dollars and I'll do the conversion uh, myself. Is that large Zinger boxes? Or, With the Pepsi Max, of course. Regular... What else would you get? <laughs> is there any other? No, no, one, <laughs> no one buys a regular size Zinger box unless you're 12 years old. Is there any other size? Yet? Exactly. <laughs> How much is this in the box? $16.45. Uh, 14... <laughs> How much? $16.45. And if in large, and if people want to go on my Patreon, they can support me by buying me a single box a month and $16.50. I couldn't do forty-five. <laughs> Sixteen forty-five. I believe so. You can get forty-two and a half zinger boxes. So my weekly supply of zinger boxes is going to get you. <laughs> is going to get you on these blowers. <laughs> how much? How much is it in actual dollars? So people actually understand. It will be. It, it will be six nine nine. Is the is the plan? That's uh, at the moment. Um, again, free free release. Um, we will we will obviously release final pricing, but um, yeah, six nine nine is is the target. Um, at, and that's more likely skin, um, and then kit obviously uh, could be a bit that. more. Um, but it's still being it's still being massaged at the moment. But I would still say that that's a that is right competitive when you're considering that a, a a backpack blower. If you didn't want a backpack blower, and you wanted something that was pretty close in power, right? Storage options, things like it's very hard to to store a backpack blower, especially mm -hmm. quiet, quiet, yeah. all that kind of stuff. That's that's competitive price now, Paul. I we we have about four and a half minutes. Uh, what is Done. what is the tool that has surprised you the most for reliability that you just never get called out to to replace or fix? Never get called out, but also it's also pleasing when you sell it to your friends who laugh at you originally. It's the chainsaw, right? Every, my mates absolutely laughed at me. Yeah. Uh, shredded me for trying to sell them a petrol powered chainsaw, and these are guys that go camping all the time and they've got a holiday place. And, yeah. And um, needless to say, you know, after a couple of years around the campfire, he got the thing out and you know cut down half the. So, <laughs> You're camping in the Amazon. You know, call me the next. <laughs> That's a very expensive camping trip. But, yeah, they called me the next day and just had to, and, and had to apologise. So <laughs> those are the sort of things that I love, and and we don't we 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 do not get returns on, or I I personally haven't go to return on the uh, chainsaw. So that's very pleasing as well. So I'd have to say that because the feedback that we get and, you know, having used it as well at shows and just being able to slice 
you know, tree um, logs like butter. It's um, yeah, I'm really happy with that one. I will, and what and what a way to look at the toys. We we we. This is not your area at either of you. Uh, well, actually, no, Wade, you might deal with this stuff with the on-site stuff, but uh, the drills, grounders, things like that. Uh, it just and, is it is worth mentioning as well, very briefly, that for those who need an impact driver to or, or a rattle gun to remove their blades or an angle grinder to sharpen their, their um, hedger blades or whatever to, to work on stuff, obviously the 18-volt batteries are interchangeable. And so I can totally yeah. see somebody getting those pruners or the reciprocating saw or the you know the 18 volt chainsaw or whatever it is and just being able to like there's just options there and like i said that's not the main thing that that people are interested on this program but it may be of interest to some guys thanks for coming on and um you know what if we didn't have time limits we would have cracked the two hours so thank you very much wade for your snide remarks in the emails uh (laughs) <laughs> Mate, I'm, uh, I'm, I've been uh, pleasantly surprised and I mean I've, I've had a ball I know I know Luke has as well so you know thanks so much for having us and and um, I'll uh, I'll give you Paul's personal number so you can hand that out to people to uh, contact him exactly we'll, actually we'll put it on the screen right now no I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> post all over all of our socials we'll get certain influences that we would, might have talked about before and get them to post it as well. But uh, no, we're joking. That's it. Perfect. Uh, look, thanks Perfect. guys so much for coming on. And uh, I will say that again. I'll put this on the screen one more time. Get this deal up. How quickly can I do it? There it is. Uh, we will talk about this, guys. You have the opportunity to uh, buy for $3,097 a kit that is usually 5080 so almost $2,000 sale. You need to go to agpowtools.com.au forward slash on site. And the code is 58V A L and G P. I would just say, can Paul, if someone just says, I forgot the code because I was listening to this, but I heard you on the Australian Law podcast. Just, yeah, 100%. Yeah, anything like that. Anything anything related to this podcast, just mention this podcast. I won't. Um, I'll get all the. Um, the leads come through, so yeah, not an issue. If if you make a hundred sales on this and it costs you two hundred thousand dollars, I sh- I should have just charged you that much money to come on. I should say, <laughs> I'm regret I'm regretting not charging for this now. I mean, that's like a that's like at least five zinger boxes. So, anyways, yeah, we just want our pins, Luke. All right, two <laughs> pins. That that will do. <laughs> that will. I really need to go. <laughs> This next podcast is is imminent. Thank you so much for coming on, guys. Thank Thank you. you, Appreciate it. it. See you later. See you guys.